Hello and welcome back to the Iron Man Challenge. Now, when we left off, we had a bit of a problem. <laughs> Suffice to say, a pretty major one as well. And that is that we are running out of money. Or we were running out of money. Now, I did do a little bit of battling off screen. I did attempt, by the way, to do a little bit of arena. And I was able to get to about 10 maybe 15 kills if I was lucky, but I was literally not able to do anything better than that. And, well, that kind of says everything you need to really know about my attempts to do that, really. it's It basically did not help me in the least. I was able to make such a small amount of cash that I basically, I basically said, okay, you know what? <laughs> I'm not going to do this anymore. It just does not seem to really give you that much in the way of profits and as a result i thought okay just gonna leave it just gonna leave it and we're just gonna try something else and so i went back to sea raider territory and as you can see they are starting to bring a friend yes this is a band of 44 sea raiders or 46 or something like that and uh, i actually encountered 25 of them initially and uh, so as a result i have been able to take part in quite a few wonderful battles where we gained some decent cash. And I'm now up to about a thousand. So it is enough to pay my next week's wages, which is basically the only thing that I really care about at this point. I just really want to get that next week's wages perfectly fine. And then we can think about progression after that. Also, I was able to recruit Matteld. She was 500, of course, as we already know. And so, yeah. Uh, I have a little bit less cash than I otherwise would have. But there you go. Look at this. We actually did lose a couple of people, which is to be expected. We still do not have a medic of any kind. I have no idea why I, why I have not been able to find uh, Artimena or Lezalit, because I think Lezalit's going to be really, really good for us because he has that increased trainer skill, and I think he could be a vital asset to us. But yeah, anyway, this is my army now. Uh, I have stripped away a bunch of units that I felt were either unnecessary or a little bit too expensive to keep around, uh, he says, as the Swadian Knight is still in his party. Mm. Anyway, the point is, is that I basically wanted to try and keep as many people as possible, but shedding the ones that were not too effective in battle. So I just basically leveled some of the Nord footmen into trained footmen, only a couple of them, and then I got rid of the rest of the Nord units. And the same thing with the Swadian footmen as well. I got rid of the Swadian footmen. And we just kept the watchmen and the caravan guards and, and stuff like that. Because I, I would like to get some hired blades. I went over hired blades versus Sword Sisters in the previous episode. And personally, I feel like Sword Sisters are really fantastic. I'm not going to use Vagia veterans in my army if this was a Vagia skirmisher or a Vagia ranged unit, I would definitely pick this guy up. But as it stands, Vagia infantry is not the best, so I'm just going to leave him to his own devices. Ooh, we got some nice stuff. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. So yeah, that's exactly what I was doing, basically, the whole time that I was off screen, just that arena. And then I went, I just, you know, I just went, okay, you know what, let's just go back up to Sea Raider territory and uh, I just made it just in time, really, because as you can see, I'm actually running out of <laughs> running out of food and uh, yeah, just fighting a couple of people. And they are, as I say, now bringing a friend, which is fantastic. Bringing a friend is a, a rather nice term that I uh, learned way back in Dark Age of Camelot. And uh, yeah, that's uh, there's a little bit of explanation to go with it, I think. Anyway, oh, look at that. Look at that. 468 dinars to go along with it. That, that is fantastic. Oh, there's actually another Sea Raider landing right here. So it has respawned. That's great. I didn't see that before. So that's nice. Okay, so let's sell a bunch of our loot here. I'm going to try and just basically sell everything I can with the exception of uh, helms and shields and things like that because we do have Matteld now and she is going to be a pretty worthwhile uh ad addition to our army it's going to be really really good for her to be in here so we're just going to sell everything 354 okay we're not doing too badly by the way we are going to be doing some trading in this episode 
and I will be going over some trade routes that people have uh, told me. There were a whole bunch of really, really helpful comments, and I really appreciate that wholeheartedly because, as I said before in the previous episode, I am not any means a, an expert in terms of trading in native. I might be relatively good in other mods, like uh, uh, he searches for any mods that he's actually good at trading in. <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually decent in a world of ice and fire because it's kind of required that you do trading in that mod to kind of get your, uh, you know, get your uh, nest egg up, so to speak, get your, you know, the ability to make money in that. So yeah, that's kind of a thing that I'm okay at, but otherwise maybe okay. I, I don't really do that in Pendor because Pendor you can just become a mercenary and then everything's fantastic. So not really necessary to do anything there, but otherwise I'm okay in mm, maybe Clash of Kings. I didn't really do that much there either because I would rather enlist if there's any kind of freelancer available there. But there you go. Anyway, Matteld is doing relatively nicely here. She's got some good power strike, good athletics, weapon master, all that stuff. She's going to be a really, really nice combat companion for us. Kalethi has also leveled up, which is quite nice. Okay, so we are going to get her... What are we going to get her, actually? Because, of course, I would like to get her trainer, and I'd like to get her looting. So I guess I should just continue increasing agility for the most part because then we can continue getting looting, and that is going to, in the end, pay off dividends, because we're just going to have so much more cash than we otherwise would have. And so as a result, I might end up specking a little bit into inventory management. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to level up these Nords, because I kind of would like to get a small amount of maybe Nord veterans or Nord Huskals. It's going to take them a long time to get to Nord Huskals, so it's not really a big deal. But Swadian Knights are just way too expensive for me to currently field. So we're going to keep, as suggested by one of you, we're going to keep about 40 units for the moment because I felt like, as I said as well in the previous episode, we just really went a bit overboard. Or at least my text said that. Anyway. We are going to level up Ferentus now. Okay, so what are we going to get him? Well, as I said, we're probably going to continue getting him Charisma. And even if I can't continue leveling up his leadership, I could get him Pathfinding right now. Or I could start to level up his Iron Flesh and Power Strike, Shield and things like that. I'm actually going to level up his... I really don't know. I think I'll level up his Shield, actually, because... At the moment, he has 12 agility, so theoretically, he could have 4 in shield. And as I've said, shield is far and away much better than iron flesh if you're using a shield. If you're using a, a two-handed, then of course, iron flesh is the way to go. But for this, especially considering we really do need them to survive quite handily, this is a really good idea. Otherwise, trading. We're going to try and do some trading here. So trading is going to be quite difficult for me. But people have told me some rather nice trade routes, and I'm trying to remember this from memory here, because I don't have it written down or anything, but I'm trying to remember it from memory. And I'm hoping that Boyar Mariga might actually stop by Rivercheck at some point. But apart from that, Wercheck, okay? So we have a trade route. Wercheck to Sargoth, and then from Sargoth to Kuror, and then to Kuror to Ravidin, and then, as far as I can recall, Ikimur sells spices as far as i'm aware it sells spices and maybe something else and you can buy spices and then basically sell them anywhere else and you can make a profit and then you can just swing on by back to Wercheg. as far as i remember that's what the uh that's what the uh the, the trade route that someone said was and i really very much appreciate that otherwise i think that we could also as i said as well uh, we could also stop by some villages and see if they have some good stuff to sell because sometimes they have some stuff that you can buy. For example, this. Look at this. Raw silk for 234. That's actually not even that much. And uh, theoretically, I could actually sell a couple of uh, a couple of body armor pieces as well uh, just to kind of offset the money situation. So I only have to pay 82 in actual fact. And then I could go to Rivercheck and actually see whether I make a little bit of cash from that. Because that's 234 that I spent right now, wasn't it? 
and I can sell it for 228. Oh, they're actually selling silk as well. So that really doesn't help me that much. But who knows? Maybe I can find another, another town that would be quite advantageous for us. So anyway, let's just, uh, do I have enough space? Uh, yeah, I think I have enough space for some, for some loot. So let's just go in and fight a couple more sea raiders and then we will begin our trade route and we'll see how it goes. Because here's the thing, I actually do not have any trade skill, which is a big problem. And I believe, uh, hmm, that's the thing. I don't exactly know whether any of the companions that I'm going to be getting actually come with trade skill because the only real trader that I know of is Manid and I wasn't really going to get him I uh, I don't know I, I just think that uh, in general the other companions tend to have slightly better stats and a slightly better way of, of, of leveling up so I really don't know what we're going to do about that but we'll see we'll see maybe I'll just recruit Manid just for the trading and then we'll just say to him hey okay you know what it's probably time that we split ways yeah that would be oh okay that's harsh my horse is dead that's not very nice that is not very nice of them at all now I am actually going to try and get a winged mace because personally all of these kills that I'm getting right now they could be turned into cash so I am going to be on the lookout for a winged mace as well Personally, I feel like that, in general, that, that's just a really fantastic strategy to have as well. So, for example, I remember playing Purizno, uh, one of the earlier versions or one of the sort of middle versions of Purizno that I played on the channel. I played this amazing, uh, amazing kind of like character build associated with this faction. I think they were called the Realm of the Falcon. And the Realm of the Falcon had some just wonderful units for prisoner taking. So all I did was I just spec'd a huge amount into, uh, I, I don't even know whether they have prisoner management in prison. I think it's I think it's associated with your, with your party size for the most part. So I don't think you really need to worry about it so much. But basically, I took basically every single person that we fought prisoner because every single unit in the Realm of the Falcon had a blunt weapon. So literally every single enemy that we ever, you know, had a battle with, they would become our prisoners and then we would be able to sell them to our ransom broker and we were making so much bank as a result. It was just insane. And I believe that the creators of Parisno did actually change that at a later point because it is a little imbalanced, let's face it. It is kind of imbalanced to have a faction that is so incredibly good at taking prisoners and indeed really good against heavily armored units as well so they did change it to make it harder to join the realm of the falcon and to make it harder to recruit those units but for the most part we are going to look for a winged mace or some other blunt weapon that might come in handy i think that there is another blunt weapon i think it's a military hammer or something like that that might be something good as well and just bear in mind that it is not going to be as good at reach as the saber. But my horse is actually dead, isn't it? So I, I, maybe I should take a look and see if I can get a courser or something. Not a champion one. That's not going to work. These are just way too expensive. I could, if I had wound treatment, I could get this. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to buy a really, really cheap horse and then we'll just go with that. Not something I particularly want to do. There's Nizar. Not going to be getting Nizar, unfortunately. He's not going to be someone that I would like to join my army at this time. Maybe we can get Boyar Mariga to show up here. I'm actually kind of wondering where he is. So let's, let's go in and see where he actually is. And then we'll get down to the trading if he's nowhere nearby. If he is nearby, then I would like to speak to him and see whether he gives us a task to potentially eliminate that Sea Raider landing. That might be nice. Okay, so I want another location of Boyar Mariga. He should be close to Tizmir. Right, where is Tizmir? Yeah, even though I've played this game so much, I still do not know where all of the various villages are. Mm, that's pretty far away, in my opinion. I don't particularly want to go all the way down there searching for him, so we are instead just going to move on. We have a decent amount of cash. I could potentially sell my raw silk somewhere reasonably close by as well. And then we'll see what happens with that. I might even get rid of all of my mercenary units, to be honest, because they are draining my resources quite considerably. 
And uh, I don't know whether I really want that. I'm going to keep the Camp Defender because she's almost at Sword Sister level and I really like those. Uh, as I said, I detailed a whole bunch of things in the previous episode about Sword Sister, so I won't go over it again, but that's pretty cool. Oh, also, oh, look at this. The Carnate have taken Kudan from the Vegeas. Look at this. There's some really crazy stuff going on, by the way, in the map. Has you Have you seen this? Look at this. The Saranids have lost Cherise to the Rodox. And Wercheg was obviously taken by the Vegiers. And I believe Yalen, earlier on in the game, I noticed this while editing, that, uh, yeah, that was actually taken by the Swadians, as far as I'm aware. So that's, that's pretty crazy. There's some um, huge amount of thief swapping going on, which is kind of crazy. Okay, so let's actually continue to go into these villages and see whether they have anything for us. I'm just going to buy some food because these are really, really cheap and we will be able to make some good profit off something good if we actually see them there. I believe that most of the Rodok towns have a huge amount of velvet, so theoretically I could buy some velvet from there and then we could sell it somewhere else, but I don't really know whether that's going to be too good. Ah, there you go. Look at this. You can literally buy raw silk right here. and uh, You can sell it for 546. That is actually kind of crazy. That is really nice. Okay, I like that a lot. Let's buy some additional food as well. And, oh yeah, the uh, the one comment that was uh, detailing that trade route that I went over earlier in the episode, that is a fantastic trade route. However, I have tried the other, the other tip that you gave me, and that is to assess local prices. I, I already kind of know about that kind of function. I've tried it before, but here's the thing. This is what happens when I try this. I don't think it's going to work because we have zero in trade. As you can see right here, look at this. You try to figure out the best goods to trade in, however, you're unable to find any trade goods that will bring a profit. So that is indeed the, my, my main issue at the moment. I literally just don't have any trade skill. So what I am going to need to do is I am going to need to find some some companion that has... I mean, I could get Marnid, as I say. I could get Marnid, so that might make sense. But as it stands, I don't really know whether I want to do that right now. Shall we? Shall we? Oh, you know what? Let's just go to Kuro and see what's going on there. Because I have already done a little bit of trading as well, by the way. So just to test things out, make sure, you know, I know what to do and everything. But yeah, basically what we can do is we can take a look. Ah, yeah. So the marketplace still has not refreshed from my trading. So... Well, now that we have quite a bit of cash, we could actually do something a little bit here. They had a whole bunch of iron here. And I bought that for 124 and you can sell tools and things at Ravadin, I believe, for a decent profit. So we bought that for 667 So let's see how much we're actually going to make. Because, of course, prices do fluctuate. They do fluctuate. So let's have a look. Okay, 600 and... Wait a minute. We're not getting... We're not getting... The, no, that's, that's not good at all. Yeah, look, there's the iron that we sold here previously. So that is actually not a good idea right now. So we'll probably sell that elsewhere. And there's a ransom broker. We don't have any people, do we? No, we don't have any people. That's unfortunate. Oh, well, never mind. Okay. So let's just continue to go to move onward then. And you know what? I think I might... The Kurgits are at war against the Vegiers, right? So maybe what I could do is become a va uh, vassal, become a mercenary of the Vegiers. I know, I know I said that I wasn't going to become a mercenary of theirs, but I am not going to use uh, Kurgit units anyway. Uh, and there's no offense to people that really love the Kurgits. I just don't feel like they're going to really help us in the Iron Man challenge, at least for the moment, because Horse Archer AI is not in the native base game. Whereas if it was, I would probably use some Kurgit horse archers because they're just fantastic. So I'm actually going to play as a mercenary here. As you can see, we are actually at war against the Kurgits. So this is going to be quite interesting. With the exception of me gaining a little bit of cash, we are now unable to enter Ikima. Hmm. Is that is that a bad thing? I don't think that's I don't th I don't think that's too bad. I think that's all right. So let's just continue to take a look around here. Wool, that's quite expensive for wool, I think. So probably not going to do that. All right, well, let's just continue onward. And maybe we should just go back to the Sea Raider landing because that might make sense. Ah, 
yeah, it's, it's kind of difficult. This is what I mean. Trading, in my opinion, is kind of harsh because some of the time you're kind of like, if you, if you don't, like me, have any, you know, have, have any trade skill, then it is quite difficult. Ah, here we go. Ah, still quite expensive. Oh, well, I guess I'm just going to sell this and we'll just sell the rest of this stuff as well because everyone is kitted out relatively nicely right now. And we'll check the tavern. So we gained another thousand. There's Nizar once again, ransom broker. Okay, so we'll just check any blunt weapons. They do have a, <laughs> they do have a club, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for, to be honest. Although it might make sense. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It might make sense for many, many reasons. Okay, let's actually go in and fight these guys. You know what? I'm actually just going to leave here real quick because what I would like to do is get... Oh, there's Boya Moriga. Ah, I actually wanted to get both parties of Sea Raiders in the action there. So that would have been pretty cool. Uh, okay, so this guy's been taken prisoner and they're going to give us 5,000 dinars if we get him out of prison. Right. That, no, I'm sorry. I, I don't think that I can do that. There's no way I can do that. Usually I end up dying in those particular tasks. So uh, I'm going to be saying no to that. I'm actually kind of surprised that he's not giving me the Sea Raider landing quest. But maybe that is because we are a mercenary now. So it might, yeah, that might make things a bit difficult. But it, on, the, on the plus side, it does make it so that Sea Raiders are really, really popular in this area so they're going to be really easy for us to fight all the time basically so that's quite nice all right so let's try and get these sea raiders into a battle with another group of theirs and hopefully they'll run across someone oh uh, uh, yeah they did but then they turned around and changed direction mm, that's also kind of the thing that happens but basically what i was trying to do was get two of those groups into one battle so that we could get more loot more money and more renown and that would have really made a big difference but it doesn't really matter either way because we're going to get probably the same amount of loot either way but it just kills two birds with one one stone basically so it just saves a bit of time but otherwise uh, I think we can actually just charge straight on in here we have 22 cavalry and this is really where I wish I had blunt weapons but maybe my slave driver is going to kill a couple of people who knows? But I am actually really worried about getting killed by these Sea Raiders, even though I'm literally just running in there like I have nothing to lose, even though I do very much. So, yeah. The idiotic bear tail showing his face every episode nowadays for some reason. And yeah, I am probably not going to try another tournament for a little bit of time, because at this point, unless there's a tournament really close by, I'm just not going to make the time to to walk there you know unless it's like really really close so we're gonna do something like that because if i do end up potentially winning a tournament i think i could win a tournament i've just been kind of stupid in my uh in my decision making in the past <laughs> in the very very near recent past and uh, yeah we're just going to try and be a little bit more uh tactical in those areas because as it stands, I really do want to win one of those tournaments. It's going to give us so much in the way of, well, everything. It's really going to give us so much. So it would be great if we could do that. Hello, Sea Raider. Ah, hello. Oh, wait a minute. There's only six of you. Mm. All right, I'm just going to stand here. And this is also something that you can do too. You can just literally stand here and you can just speed up time. And if you have a pretty decent large army like I have right here. It's not that large, but you know, it's a medium sized army. And then you can just speed up time. And then any sea raiders that get into range, you can kind of just see how many they have. And they're just all going to keep running away from you. Now, if you move away slightly, because they, they obviously want to go to their sea raider landing. So if you kind of give them a little bit of space like this, then they're basically cut off and you can just go boom straight into them and they're not going to run away from you that easily. I have been told that I need to go and report to the marshal. Don't know whether I'm really going to be doing that. This horse is extremely slow. Have you noticed that? I, I, did I buy a lame one? I really don't think I bought a lame one, but we have leveled up. So I'm going to get my, my uh, point in agility right here and let's get another point in shield. As I said, shield's really, really important. And I know that someone did mention 
that I'm not getting any power draw, but I need to get power draw to be able to use a bow. Yes, I realize. But the thing is, is that I kind of just want to make sure that we are going to survive at this point. And using a bow in general is going to open me up to a lot of damage. So if I can potentially just increase my... I'm hoping to get about... Let's have a look here. I'm hoping to get about 60, 64 HP, something along those lines, before we start using a bow. So there's quite a bit of time between that and now. So there's no real need for me to rush to, to get power draw at this point. But I am going to be using, I think, a strong war bow or something along those lines. Uh, I think there might be a better one than, than strong. I'm not entirely sure about the modifiers at the moment, but basically a war bow is going to be the thing that we're going to be going for and i think i need five maybe five six in power draw can't really remember offhand but something along those lines to be able to uh use the your use the war bow at its best strength so that's what we're going to do and you can see there i didn't you know i didn't rescue any people either because let's face it we didn't really want to do that right now aha hello there we go this is what we want <gasps> Nice. There's a lot of groups here. This is great. Ah, oh, they didn't they didn't bring a friend this time? Oh, that's kind of a shame. Okay, I was hoping that they would bring a friend, but no, then they're actually not going to do that this time. So, that's unfortunate. I feel like this horse is absolutely useless for me. I don't know. Maybe it's just not a combat horse. I don't think it is a combat horse as far as I'm aware. The different types of horses give you different types of things. So, for example, this horse is much more of a trading horse, and uh, basically what that means is you keep it in your inventory and it will give you a little bit of extra speed on the world map and basically uh, there's a whole thing in Warband where if you have six or less horses in your inventory that will increase your speed. Six is the optimal number. Six gives you the m maximum speed available and of course if you have cavalry units, so if you have Swadian man-at-arms or Kurgit Lancers or anything like that that is mounted, you're also going to be moving a little bit quicker on the world map in comparison to having infantry. Because if you have infantry, then of course they're going to move slower, you know, it just makes sense in a realistic sort of sense. So yeah, generally that's the reason why if you play a mod like Pendor or uh, Perizno and you come across a band of enemies that are primarily cavalry, they're going to absolutely chase you down like no one's business because they literally just have cavalry and they're just so so fast as a result so that that's definitely something to consider if you are going to be a trader oh i'd love to fight those 26 but i have no space in my inventory right now so maybe we'll have to fight them in in a little bit but otherwise let's see uh, i think i could sell all this don't really need to worry about it too much i need to be careful about going over the amount that this guy actually has because he only has 600 dinars remaining but i think we should be okay and look at our money situation our money's doing pretty well now yes very good i like it okay so if nizar is still in here yes he is okay i'm actually just going to wait here for some time and then then we will do some trading Ah, here we go. Okay, so Boya Mariga is now uh, thankfully not at war against the Carnate anymore. I uh, think I may have shown that on the screen with a little red arrow that was pointing to the right to rule because I was so happy to get right to rule finally. Because now that we are a mercenary, every single time a faction makes peace, and I don't think it happens when you when you make war, but I think every single time a faction makes peace with someone, you're going to be gaining some right to rule. So that's really cool. And hopefully the Vagias are going to be declaring war against a whole bunch of people and then making peace with them. And then we will find that we'll have a massive amount of right to rule eventually, which is going to be really nice. Otherwise, as you can see right here, the Sea Raiders have established a hideout in this area and have been attacking travelers. Yes, I will be definitely doing that. Thank you very much. Okay, so first off, what I want to do is I want to send Clethy to uh, give me some right to rule. So she's going to go off. And she'll be back in, I think, 14 days or something like that, or 21 days. I don't know precisely the, the number at this point, but that's going to be really, really nice for us because I believe they return with three. They return with three right to rule, which is really good because I have three. <laughs> yes, I actually have three right to rule. So I need 30 
if we are going to have any chance of doing anything with that. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. But we're going to head into the hideout and hopefully we will have Matteld in here. Yes, we do. Yes, we have Forentis and Matteld. All right, here's what we're going to do. Place your bets. Place your bets. Pause the video if you have to, but place your bets. Who do you think is going to get more kills in this particular engagement? I am actually not going to be fighting that much because I would like to see... Who, who actually gets more kills? I'm going to take Matthild here. I'm going to go for her. I think she's going to get more kills than Forentis, even though he's more he's more of a veteran in our army at this point. But I'm going to say her, because she's the new recruit. She has to prove herself, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I, of course, cannot really command... Can I command them? I can command them in a way. So technically what I could do is I could... Forentis, what are you doing? <laughs> he's being a bit weird right now but I'm going to just keep my cavalry back for the moment and we're just going to let our infantry just go in and by infantry I mean of course Forentis and Mattel so we're going to see who indeed gets more kills yes Forentis okay there you go I, I don't know why I'm saying yes for him I didn't actually well didn't actually vote for him at the point at this point but anyway we're just going to leave these cavalry over here because they're probably going to have some units that will be spawning in that direction but so far, it is Forentis that leads 1-0. So we'll see how it goes. I don't know whether they're going to go to different areas. Doesn't seem like that. Personally, I feel like they're probably going to end up dying here. Because uh, Sea Raiders, I mean, they're not the best, but they are the highest tier of bandits. So they might very well have the ability to... Oh, Forentis is now 2-0. And Matteld got eliminated. She has the same gear as he does. Which is kind of weird, but I guess maybe she does have less weapon proficiency, so I guess that's the reason. Oh well, never mind, that was not really a smart bet on my part, but for those of you that did take Forentis, congratulations, you win, well, not much, but you win the accolade of betting on him, I guess. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll, we'll do some things like that in the future as well, where we have more companions and we'll see who gets the most kills in these kinds of situations. Oh, Forentis got himself eliminated now as well. I guess that is to be expected. And I am by myself here now, so this is going to be a bit worrisome, but I think I should be okay. These guys are not exactly dangerous. <laughs> Forentis and Matheld getting themselves eliminated by non-dangerous bandits. Pitiful fools, yes, says he, the one that lost two tournaments in a row. Very good. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well, there you go. That's indeed a victory for us. Who knows, Matteld might have actually taken more damage from the initial assault because Forentis stayed back a little bit and our man-at-arms were coming in and basically stealing the kills, perhaps. So that might have also made a pretty big difference in how effective she was. But anyway, mail shut, that's nice. That is actually a really nice thing to get and we're just going to take everything here. Everything that I can get my hands on. There we go. All right, so Boya Moriga is still here, fantastically enough. He's just gone into the castle, and I'm going to walk around the streets for no reason. Yeah, everything has a reason in this Iron Man challenge, so who knows? Maybe I could have been uh, crushed by a boulder as I enter the, the keep if I had entered one second earlier. Who knows? Anyway, there you go. Another 1,500 dinars. He is loving us. He's got five relation. Yes, it's fantastic. No, he's not really loving us. He's just cooperative, but, you know, it's kind of good anyway. So, yeah, that's nice. There you go. Another 1,500. Very, very cool. And let's go and not sell to that guy. Let's sell to this guy. Yeah, so the Sumter Horse is 33 speed. Hmm. It is pretty slow. It is pretty slow in comparison to the other horses, so I suppose that is indeed the reason. Okay, well, let's just sell this. I won't sell the mail shirt because you never know. We might come across someone like, uh, I don't know, a new companion or something like that that would maybe help us quite a bit. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to Wercheg. Hopefully the marketplaces have refreshed and then we will be able to do a trade route. I know I said I was going to do a trade, you know, I was going to do trading very early on in this episode and I apologize for it taking so long, but the fact is is that sea raiders are quite quite good to fight. You know, you've seen that firsthand. I now have 4700 in cash and all of our forces have leveled up, which is actually really nice too, but I'm not going to level them up just yet because I would like to do this. Oh yeah, there we go. This is what I'm talking about. Salt is fantastic to sell at Sargoth, according to that comment. So that is really, really good. I, I have, I think I've also done this once before as well, where 
I uh, bought some salt and sorted at Sargoth, and it is very good. It is lucrative and quick. And you can come across some uh, some bandits in the meantime, if you want to. You know, you can actually come across some bandits in your trading routes. And that's exactly the thing that I have never done. I have never created a trading character. Can you believe that? The only time that I think I did that is in A World of Ice and Fire. And that was not really a pure trading character. It was just that I did a whole bunch of trading. That was it, you know. So anyway, there you go. Look at that. We bought it for 91 and now we're selling this for 200 plus per one. So that's basically doubling our money right there. So that is really, really nice. Look at that. That is cool. And then we're going to go to Cure Ore. And any one of you can, can easily do this as well. And there's our mercenary payment as, as, as well. There's, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously in uh, mods like Pendor, you're going to be getting over a thousand most of the time, or it's just going to cover your wages just straight up, which is just so fantastic. So it's definitely something to consider if you want more of a challenge, then you can definitely, you know, be by all means, you know, just go and go and have a fun old time, <laughs> you know, in Pendor doing the Iron Man challenge. That's going to be kind of harsh, but... Who knows? Maybe I'll do it at some point. Anyway, uh, I don't know whether to buy tools here because we bought tools beforehand and it didn't really seem to give us that much selling it at Ravadin. So we're just going to see how much we get for the iron alone. So we're getting 574. We spent that. And how much are we going to get here? Yeah, not too bad. That's a decent, decent profit. Nothing too amazing. But it is decent. As you can see, they already have a whole bunch of tools here. So it's not really going to make that much sense me buying tools there anyway. Or, or buying them in Cure Ore and then selling them in Ravidin. Otherwise, let's see. Oh, oh, that's actually quite expensive. Yeah, I was actually thinking to myself, oh, look at this oil. I can sell this for a whole bunch of money. But that is actually quite expensive in the village itself. As far as I'm aware. Yeah, as you can see, the oil in Ravidin is actually cheaper than the one in the village, which is quite amusing. But anyway, we're going to go into the tavern here. Mm, doesn't seem like there's anything here. I could go upstairs and maybe check some of the rooms in case there is a companion. Ah, oh, no, they, they seem to be locked at the moment. All right. Well, there is another trade route that you can do where you can go to Ikimur and then you can buy some spices and I think something else. And then you can sell sell it basically anywhere else in Calradia and you'll make a pretty decent profit there as well. But that is the basic trade route. So you go to Ikima and sell anywhere else. So I'd recommend probably selling at Kudan or selling at Tia or something like that. And then swing all the way around to Wercheg again. And then fight some Sea Raiders perhaps. And then see what you can do like that. So once again, thanks to those of you that uh, gave me some trade route tips. And that will be it for this episode. Next time, I think we're probably going to... Or I am probably going to swing around... All of the Rodok territory, all of the Swadian territory, Nord territory, and Vegia territory, and maybe even Karnate territory too, and see if I can find some additional companions, because it's really annoying me now that we don't have Lezalit, Artimena, or even Dashavi for, you know, spotting and things, and uh, yeah, that would be really, really helpful, because while Forentis and Mateld are beasts in their own right, they're not really helping us in terms of party skills so we're going to have to get some party skill companions anyway that will be it i thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time